What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Tutorial Tuesday. Let's hop right into After Effects and see what we're going to be creating today. Before we get into After Effects, I just want to say this tutorial was requested by Yashwan Alaki. I think that's how you pronounce your name. Uh, he requested I make this tutorial. So if you want to see a tutorial, you know, you can request it in the comment section and I'll do my best to try and get to it. So he sent me this link and this is the effect he wanted to learn how to create. It was essentially a GIF that was posted to Reddit and it's kind of like this character intro, like zoomy distortion thingy. And one last thing before this tutorial completely starts, all the project files and links and all that good stuff in the description. If you want to download the file and follow along or just mess around with the footage, feel free to use it in your project, but just know that's there in the description if you want to download the project file. This is the effect we're going to be creating today with my footage. It's pretty similar. You have some text coming in with my name and then it like zooms back out. So it's not going to be quite as intense as this. So it's not going to be quite intense as this, but it's going to give you the steps so you can potentially create this effect. I'm also thinking about potentially making a tutorial in the future on how to achieve like a fire text like this. The main thing I'm going to be showing you today is how to separate the foreground and the background like you see right here. So let's hop right into it. Go ahead and grab the footage that I've supplied and drag it into After Effects. Once that's imported, just go ahead and drag it into a new composition down here. This will create a composition with all the proper attributes that your footage had. So if you look here, nothing special happens in this shot, just kind of me talking like an idiot. So the first step in this is finding what position in your footage you want the transition slash character intro to start. So I'm just going to pick any spot, um, you know, you obviously need to find the spot for your footage that looks best. I'm just going to start right there and then what I'm going to do is duplicate the footage, control D on the keyboard and then hit control shift D which will cut the clip and then delete that previous footage. You also with the clip on top selected can click alt left bracket and I'll just trim it up to your playhead. So now what I'm going to do is right click it, click time and click freeze frame. And this is just going to freeze this so no other time occurs for this footage. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the pen tool. I'm going to go into full resolution for a second so I can make the best masking possible. And I'm just going to mask around myself. This will make more sense in a second, but I'm just masking. Probably going to speed up this process so you guys don't have to watch the whole thing. The key component here is separating the foreground and the background. So to do that, go to the first frame of your roto layer, hit control shift D on your keyboard. That's going to cut your bottom footage layer. And what you're going to want to do is right click time and freeze this as well. So it doesn't change in time. And then to help over here, I'm just going to rename this background. So it's more organized and then rename this foreground. And I'll just rename this beginning both because it's both of them. So I'm just gonna double click the background layer and then what you wanna do is go up here to the clone stamp tool. If you hit control and slide your mouse on the keyboard, it'll shrink your pen size or you can go over here in the brushes and pick whatever you know pen tool you want. So I'm just gonna hit control and grow that up and then what you wanna do is if you click alt, that'll select that area in your scene and then if you left click, it'll bring that back over on top. Don't worry about making this perfect, it's not 100%. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but you want to make it look as good as possible, bring in some variance here. So I'm just alt left clicking over here and then normal left clicking on top of the footage and that will copy, copy everything over. This will make more sense in a second and it'll make more sense why it doesn't have to be too perfect. So that doesn't look perfect, but it's not going to matter a whole lot. So this is going to create a problem in your footage because it's going to look like a bunch of the scene change. So what you're going to want to do is duplicate your foreground and then I'm going to rename this to foreground mat. This is just for organizational purposes and then I'm going to click the toggle switches mode down here so that I can see uh, the track mat. And then what you want to do is you want to go into the none section of your background and then click alpha mat foreground mat. So that just got rid of the background you're probably like what the heck and if you turn off the top foreground layer right here so what this essentially does is it's taking the alpha from your mask you made and then just applying it to the paint layer so if you turn that back on and then duplicate the beginning both at the bottom and then drag this over alt left click you want to right click and click time freeze frame again essentially you're creating a mat around your character so then if you move this around, obviously it's going to look like the background is still there. But to make this cleaner, I'm going to feather it a little bit, maybe like 20, just so if you turn off the foreground, you can kind of see. And then I'm going to hit M twice on the keyboard and then bring up the mask expansion just ever so slightly. So it kind of gets rid of my halo, maybe drag out the feathering a little more like 45 and then 
drag up the expansion a little more. So what you should have up to this point is everything should freeze at this frame. And then if you turn off your foreground layer, you should see through to the background. It should kind of be painted out. Then we want to get to the effects that are going to be affecting the background. We're going to start with that. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new adjustment layer and then drag that under the foreground. And if I go over here in my effects and presets tab and I type in CC lens, this is going to be kind of the first effect that we're working with. And the reason I'm dragging this on an adjustment layer is because it's easy to drag it and then it affects all the layers below it. I'm going to drag up the size at the beginning to be right at 500, keyframe the center and the size at the beginning frame right here. I'm just going to go ahead and alt left bracket the adjustment layer. And then if you hit U on your keyboard, it'll bring up all the keyframes. And then I'm just going to drag forward a few frames and then bring up, bring down the size so it kind of stretches out into this cool, it kind of like warps a little bit. And then I'm going to right click it and then click keyframe assistant and click easy ease and this will just ease the keyframes into that position so the transition won't be as harsh so then if you preview this you can kind of see what effect we're trying to create that's a little too slow there so I'm just gonna bring it back and then it'll happen over the course of these frames instead of it being drawn out for so long so it's kind of like a pop what I'm also gonna do is drag up the size a little bit more so it's kind of like a little little wacky here so I'm gonna select your background in your mat I'm gonna parent it to this layer right here the one that isn't this beginning but is right here during this first frame i'm gonna hit go ahead and hit the s key on your keyboard and i'll bring up the scale properties and then drag it across and then just scale it up if you hold shift you can just scale it slightly so this just scales and i'm gonna right click and click easy ease i'm also going to drag these back just a little bit it's all about adjusting it to you know get the look that you want to achieve and i'm going to drag up the size just a little a little bit less so it kind of reaches this weird point and what I'm gonna do is create another adjustment layer and then drag that below your foreground as well this is gonna be all the coloration changes that I'm gonna make so I'm gonna type in hue and then drag over the hue and saturation effect and bring this on to the layer and then I'm just gonna bring up the saturation a little bit and then mess with the wheel so it kind of creates this trippy kind of like purple effect. And I'm gonna drag up the saturation a little bit more so it's kind of crazy. And then I'm gonna hit Alt left bracket again to trim up that adjustment layer, hit T on your keyboard, and then bring up your keyframe properties for your bottom layer and then hit U on your keyboard again to bring up the opacity. And then you just wanna match it to hit that 100% keyframe whenever your other scale does. And then I'm also gonna right click it and easy ease that transition as well. So as you can see, the effect is starting to take place. So you could see that I keyframe the center of the CC lens effect. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go forward in my composition a little bit. I'm just going to move it a little bit. So this creates a little movement in the shot so it's not so static. You know, maybe I don't want to move it that much, just like ever so slightly a little bit to the right. I'm also going to keyframe some position changes to the background layer right here. So I'm going to hit the stopwatch on the beginning and then change the position, hit U, and then go over here to like farther. And I'm just gonna drag it to the left a little bit. Then if I preview, you can see that just creates a little bit more movement effect. What I'm gonna do now is because I need more time in my composition, I'm gonna go up to composition, composition settings, and then set up the duration, maybe to just 14 seconds. I don't know how long I want the effect to be. Then I'm just gonna drag all my layers out. As you can see, as you drag out, your paint layer on your background starts to go out. So if you go to the layer that is matted and click E, it'll bring up the effects, and then you can drop down the paint. And what you wanna do, you just wanna select all your clone options and then just click the edge of one of them and drag them all out and this will just make them last as long as you need it to be there so now that we got the background kind of going there we're going to affect the foreground aka me so i'm going to select the foreground i'm going to hit y on your keyboard and that's just going to enable you to change the anchor point where all the scale and rotations are affected so if I hit there and then rotate, it'll rotate around that point and it'll scale around that point. So I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard, create a keyframe. I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard, create a keyframe for the position as well. And I'm gonna hit U, it's gonna bring up all the keyframes that I set. So I'm gonna go to that same point in time where the other keyframes are set. And I'm just gonna scale it up a little bit. I'm just gonna scale it up a little bit and maybe move it over just ever so slightly. And then just move it, maybe just move it over just a little tad. And then if you go forward some few frames, you want to move it in the opposite direction that your background's moving because that's what I found that works best. And just select all those keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. What I'm actually going to do for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to make me move this way. I'm also going to drag me a little bit this way. And then I want to make the background move 
the opposite. So you just wanna make sure that the background moves the opposite way that you're moving because then you create a little parallax and that's what I found works the best and looks the best. If I play that back, I think this is kinda of happening too quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it out, highlight all those keyframes and then just drag it out a little bit. This will just ease in like the zoom transition. And I'm also gonna drag out the position way further because you would drag it back. It's all about customizing it and finding the look that you're trying to accomplish. I'm also gonna hit R and then click the keyframe for the rotation, hit U again. I'm gonna hit W so I can pull up my rotation tool and I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit when it zooms in here and then maybe set it to rotate a little back right there and then select them all. You kind of see the theme here. I'm just easy easing essentially every keyframe except for these first keyframes. So then it just kind of has this cool rotation effect and it looks looks like it's moving a little bit. I'm also gonna do that for the background. So if you hit R, hit the stopwatch, hit U, got all keyframes, and then go to that position and you just wanna rotate it a little bit and rotate it in the opposite way that your footage is. That'll make it look the best. And then also set it to rotate back the other way throughout the length of your footage. Select the keyframes, right click, easy ease, you know the drill by this point. If you go to this original GIF, what also happens is they add a lot of contrast right here, like all of a sudden it like pops in with like super colorized contrast. So I'm gonna go to the effects and presets, type in curves, and then drag that on top of the foreground layer, and then just hit the stopwatch for the curves, and then as you go forward to these keyframes, drag below and then drag up here, and that's just gonna create some intense contrast. If you hit right up here, then you can also, you know, just affect, and you can just play around. You can get super creative here and kind of like artsy, if you please. You know, just drag in the green and just, I don't particularly like this, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo the changes to the green. Maybe play around with the blue. So I literally had no plan for this. Just kind of messing around with a little artsy, filtery looking intro. Because an in intro, this effect doesn't really have a standard. It's all up to you. And then if you click the foreground and hit U, I'm also just gonna set this keyframe to easy ease so the effect kind of eases. Once you preview that, that blends the layers a lot more when you like do that weird colorization. This isn't where you have to stop with the creative effects. You can also drag on like a CC Collider to your hue and saturation and then you can see it'll just kind of fade in and create this kind of like trippy background and then, so it all kind of depends on the effect you're going for with your intro or whatever you're trying to accomplish. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna type in fast blur and then drag over the fast box blur to whatever adjustment layer you have that also has the hue and saturation. And I'm gonna set this to like five, maybe 10. Since this adjustment layer is already set for the opacity, that's just gonna keyframe in the blur so your background gets a little blurrier. So now the question remains, how are we gonna zap this back up? Because in this original GIF, what happens is it plays and then it like zaps back to real life and finishes whatever was happening. So what happens is go to your last keyframes and then set a keyframe for everything and then just go forward however much time you think and then select all the keyframes from your foreground that you affected, hit control C and then hit control V to paste it. So this is basically gonna zip it back to the exact effects and location that it was before from the first frame. So we also have to do this for the background obviously. So you're gonna hit, select both your adjustment layers, hit T, and then make sure that opacity is selected, hit a keyframe so that everything goes back to zero at the same frame, just like the foreground layer. So then that's obviously gonna take care of the CC lens. You're also gonna wanna hit U on your CC lens adjustment layer and then hit a stopwatch for all those and then drag the effect back down to 500. So that's just gonna kinda zip it back into place. And then what you wanna do for your background layer is you wanna hit U, make sure one of your layers up top is selected so you can see when those keyframes need to occur. Go ahead and drag the keyframes you already set to the position that the other ones are. And then also hit this keyframe for scale so all those changes will be affected over the right time. And then just go and drag along right here and this will set keyframes back to that normal position. So then select all your keyframes from the first frame, hit Control C and then paste them again to that same last frame. And then as you can see, that's just gonna zip everything right back into the normal position that it was on the first frame. Also guys, sorry if you can hear, but my neighbor just started weed eating his yard. So if that's in the background audio, I apologize. I think my mic is pretty good at picking up. So if you preview this here, you can kinda see it like zips in and kinda like warps, moves a little bit and then zips back to the previous position. And then obviously it's still gonna be frozen. So the only thing else you have left to do is duplicate your beginning layer and then find this layer that would have been the next frame, hit Alt left bracket, drag this on top of everything, and then just drag this to the last keyframe. So what happens is it 
and then it just immediately starts playing the next part of your footage. So then if you preview that there, it's gonna zoop, go into the transition and then zzz, drag back out and then just immediately start playing the next part of your footage. One last thing, typically in these character intros, there's some text that occurs. So I'm just gonna type in my name because that's kind of what happens. It's like a movie character. And what I did for the effect I showed you, I'm just gonna drag this over here and then duplicate it, drag this down, double click it and then type in Ross. I'm gonna click both these layers, hit P on the keyboard, click a property for the position and then go forward in time to where and then drag these keyframes to that point so it's there and then go to the first frame drag the con one up and then drag the ross one down and then hit motion blur for those layers and then also hit it for the composition so when those text layers fly in they have some motion blur and look like they're looking cool and then obviously as this starts to pan out here click Control c and copy the position over from your last keyframe and then copy the first one over and then hit Control V, Control C, Control V. So then what you're doing, you're essentially just copying it to zoom back out with the same keyframes so you don't have to make any more keyframes. And then if, if you preview this, you can see the final effect, the text zooms in down, it kind of goes to this character intro and then zips back out and starts playing the rest of your footage. So that's how you do a sweet character intro in Adobe After Effects. I hope this was helpful. If you want to see your tutorial completed, just go ahead and comment down below what you are interested in seeing. Don't forget the project files in the description. And if you never want to miss out another tutorial vlog video from me again just go ahead and hit the notifications button on my channel youtube isn't great at sending out its videos to its subscribers but if you hit those notifications you'll be sure to never miss an upload again anyways my name is con ross as you can see uh, that's kind of actually serendipitous uh, that the title flies in at that exact moment my name is con ross i'll see you guys in the next video peace